Now, losing your hair can be pretty alarming. So you might be looking for solutions and you may have come over minoxidil. Uh, there's obviously various different concentrations of minoxidil. So in this video today, we wanna be looking at the 5% versus the 10%. So we're gonna show you which one's more effective uh, and how you can start implementing it as part of your hair care routine. And guys, before we get into the video on minoxidil 5% versus 10%, if you're worried about your own hair loss, click the link in the description, upload a quick hair selfie, answer a few short questions about yourself, and then you will get a hair guard analysis for free. So what you're gonna learn about today in this video is we're gonna be looking at minoxidil in the treatment of hair loss. We're gonna be looking at some of the scientific studies on whether or not five or 10% is more effective. We're gonna look at some of the dose responses we're going to look at some of the side effects. We're going to tell you what to do if 5% minoxidil solution isn't working. Then we're going to share with you a natural alternative to minoxidil treatment before a brief conclusion. Now minoxidil is a popular treatment and it's used by men and women with hair loss. And while 2 and 5% are the most common dosage solutions, the 10% solution could be a more effective way to improve hair growth results. In this video, we are going to be comparing the 10% with the 5%. And whilst there are no direct studies available on the topic, some assumptions can be made based on the research studies that are available. Now, in addition, we'll also share with you an alternative treatment method to minoxidil that many have used with success in the past. So first, let's have a look at minoxidil in the treatment of hair loss. Minoxidil was developed in the 1950s, first marketed as an ulcer treatment drug and then as a vasodilator. As studies continued, it was found that the use of minoxidil led to unexpected hair growth. It was believed to be a result of its vasodilating properties, enabling the capillaries in the scalp to become dilated and improving their abilities to deliver nutrients and oxygen to the hair. As time wore on, further studies were performed to better understand minoxidil's role in the treatment of hair loss. And this eventually led to its FDA approval in 1988 and it's been available ever since. While there are no current studies that directly compare the 5 and 10% solutions, there are a few studies which can help us to better understand how minoxidil works in various doses. One such study was performed in 2002 and it compared a 5% solution of minoxidil to a 2% solution in men suffering from androgenetic alopecia. There were 393 participants uh, with a total of 351 completing it and it lasted for 48 weeks. At the beginning of the study, 157 men were assigned to the 5%, 158 were assigned to the 2%, and 78 were assigned to a placebo group. Now, once baseline data, including non-vellus hair count, was collected, patients were instructed to apply 1 milliliters of solution to their scalp twice per day. After the initial visit, subjects returned every four weeks until week 32, and then every eight weeks until the end of the 48-week trial. Safety and effectiveness evaluations were performed at such times. And the results are here. So we're going to explain what this all means now. Now the information we are most interested in is located on the right side of the table, labelled pairwise comparison of p-value. This tells us which of the compared solutions is superior. Now in all of the investigative results, which is non vellus hair count, change in scalp coverage and benefit from treatment, you'll notice a significant preference for 5% minoxidil over 2% minoxidil. Remember that non vellus hair count was measured at baseline. Well, here's a look at the changes experienced by study participants over the course of the trial. And uh, we can see that on the right there. Now, as easily noticed above, the 5% minoxidil solutions perform better than the 2% during all evaluations. Now, the study wasn't the only one to see such results. A similar study was performed in 2004, but this time with a focus on female pattern hair loss. And as expected, the 5% minoxidil solution performed better than both the 2% and the placebo. So now we're gonna look at an understanding of the drug's effectiveness. As shown, dose response is a common occurrence in scientific research. But what exactly is dose response and what does this mean for the effectiveness of minoxidil? In simplest terms, dose response is an expected increase in effectiveness as dosage increases. For example, when subjects were treated with 5% minoxidil instead of 2%, the results were better. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. However, as highlighted by the studies above, it seems that minoxidil is one drug that follows this rule. 
So while we don't have a study that compares 10% and 5%, it's safe to say that the 10% solution would likely show more results than the 5% solution. Keep in mind that the results, while increased, aren't likely to be proportional to dosage. What we mean is that you can't expect to see twice as much hair growth with the 10% solution than the 5% solution, because dose response doesn't typically happen as such. At around 10%, we would expect results to plateau even if dosage was increased. This is the law of diminishing returns, where side effects would increase without any benefits. So now we're going to look at exactly that. We're going to look at the side effects with 5% and with 10%. With increased results, will there also be an increased risk of side effects? The active ingredient within minoxidil is minoxidil sulfate, and it's fairly harmless. It's the non-active ingredients, such as alcohol and propylene glycol, that tend to cause the more noticeable side effects. This means that, technically speaking, increased side effects should not be seen with increased dosage. Is it possible? Absolutely. In fact, an increase in puritus, local irritation and hypertrichosis was noted in the 5% treatment group in the 2004 study referenced. And that's why higher dosages are only available through prescription and require the oversight of a doctor whilst in use. So if you're taking 5% and you're not getting the results that you want, what should you do? It's unfortunate, but sometimes even those medications that are touted to be a miracle cure by so many users don't work for certain individuals. But what if minoxidil 5% is working moderately well, but you feel that results are behind others on a similar regimen? First, what we recommend is you don't compare yourself to others, even those who are taking the same treatment steps as you. Hair loss is typically a multifactored occurrence and everyone will react differently to the same course of treatment. Of course, you can always seek the help of a dermatologist and perhaps receive a prescription for 10% minoxidil. However, there's a much different path that I would encourage you to take, and that's the natural one. What I mean by this, instead of masking the issue as minoxidil does, why not treat your hair loss at the source? So now we're gonna look at the natural alternative to minoxidil treatment. I believe that there's a more natural approach to the reduction of DHT within the body, and that's through the alkalization of your diet. So 5-alpha reductase is the enzyme responsible for converting testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, and dihydrotestosterone happens to thrive in acidic conditions. Now the modern diet is full of acidic foods like carbonated beverages, sugary grains and dairy, and in the end this consumption leads to an acidic pH within the bloodstream, and it enables 5-alpha reductase to do its job. Now, alkalizing your bloodstream then is the key when it comes to putting a stop to 5-alpha reductases activities and impairing the production of DHT directly at the source. So how can you do this? Well, the obvious answer is to add more alkaline diets into your food. Fortunately, this is a lot easier than you may think, and even just a few small changes here and there can make a large impact. So here we've got a table of the acid and alkaline food chart. So on the left, you can see the most acidic foods, like alcohol, beef, artificial sweeteners, bacon, milk, cheese, ice cream, white flour, white sugar, white pasta. These are extremely acidic foods. And then as we move to the right, uh, we've got more and more alkaline foods. So what we want to do is focus on eating the foods on the right hand side of this chart. So, you know, watermelons, grapefruit, asparagus, broccoli, garlic, onions, mangoes. These are all alkaline foods that's going to help alkalize the bloodstream to remove the production of 5-alpha reductase, which converts to DHT, which can lead to hair loss. So it's all about alkalizing the diet. Now you see, the, 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 the farther you move away from processed and refined, the closer you are to alkalizing your diet and ultimately your bloodstream. Now one of the things that I like to do every morning is drink a smoothie and we recommend this at Hair Guard. Not only does this get you off to a healthy start, but it also sets the tone for the entire day. So this is the recipe that we've been working on for many years. Uh, so you've got frozen berry medley, hemp and pea protein mixture, some almond milk, coconut oil, pumpkin seed oil, a banana, some ginkgo biloba and probiotic powder. And all these ingredients listed have a specific purpose. And you'll notice that the ingredients which are included in the acid alkaline scale above all fall on the alkaline side. Now, while no studies have been performed to compare minoxidil 10% and minoxidil 5%, the results from five versus 2% studies suggest that a higher dosage can deliver better results. So should you switch to minoxidil 10% if you aren't seeing results with the 5% solution? Well, that's only a question you can answer. However, we urge you to consider taking the natural route before making the decision. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you today on minoxidil 5% versus 10%. Don't forget that if you're worried about your own hair loss, click the link in the description to get your hair guard analysis. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.
Thank you.